Imagine you were a soldier 2,500 years ago in the fields of Anatolia in modern-day Turkey. You are a Lydian fighting a battle against the Median soldiers in a war that has, at best, been a stalemate over six arduous years. Amidst the glint of iron and bronze and the pall of sweat, dust, and blood, you chance to notice a strange effect. Though it is broad daylight, the clear blue sky seems curiously muted. Shadows take on a strange texture, the sun feels weak, and the air seems cooler than it had just a few hours ago. Perhaps it's the delirium of battle, but perhaps it's something else. Through the sound of clanging swords and chariots, you hear insects as they make their evening calls, birds fly home to roost, animals return for the night. Then, over the course of a short moment, the sun fades and day turns startlingly into night. The sky darkens, the brightest stars come out, and in every direction there is a mystifying twilight. Your eyes are drawn upward to a sight more strange than you could possibly have imagined. Where the sun was just moments before, there was a glowing eye in the sky. At its center, a hole of incomprehensible darkness. The battle fades from your consciousness, and you and those around you on both sides forget the fight and gape, awestruck at the eye of a god. As, however, the balance had not inclined in favor of either nation, another combat took place in the sixth year, in the course of which, just as the battle was growing warm, day suddenly changed into night. The Medes and the Lydians, when they observed the change, ceased fighting and were anxious to have terms of peace agreed on. That event was a total solar eclipse. Even in the modern world, when most of us understand that a solar eclipse is caused by the moon coming between the earth and the sun and casting a shadow upon it, the experience, while less mystifying, is no less impressive. And that experience will be within driving distance of hundreds of millions of people when the shadow of the moon will fly across the United States on August 21st. From any given point on the earth, one can see the moon appear to take a bite out of the sun about once every year and a half or so. Such an event is interesting, and observing one, while taking proper precautions, of course, is worthwhile. However, a mere bite does not compare to the drama of the sun being completely blocked by the moon. We humans inhabit a planet in which there is a marvelous cosmic coincidence. Our star, the sun, is 400 times further away than our natural satellite, the moon. It also happens to be just about 400 times larger. This means that the two very nearly appear the same size in the sky, and the moon can, if you just happen to be in the right place at the right time, cozily fit in front of the sun, blotting it out and giving people on the ground a glimpse of what astronomers call totality. In 2017, that right place to see totality is along a 70-mile wide strip of water and land that runs from the Pacific to the Atlantic Oceans across the U.S. states of Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and North and South Carolina. Every eclipse lasts a different amount of time depending on where you view it. If you happen to be near the edge of that 70 mile wide shadow, totality will be brief. Uh, but if you're set up in a spot along the middle of the path, totality will last longer than two minutes this time. Uh, nearer to the edge, totality will be shorter, but unless you're right at the edge, not by very much so it's not real critical exactly where you are in the middle. Uh, the spot on the Earth that will be in the shadow the longest will be 12 miles to the southeast of Carbondale, Illinois, uh, where totality will be 2 minutes and 40.2 seconds. The surface of the sun that we see in the sky regularly is called the photosphere. That's the thing we're most familiar with. It glows at a temperature of 5,800 degrees Kelvin. The photosphere is so astonishingly bright compared to the other features of the sun that it is impossible, even if it could be done safely, to see them when it is in view. As the photosphere is slowly covered 
and the sun turns into a crescent, look at how the appearance of the shadows on the ground change. You can try making a simple pinhole projector, which is basically just a piece of cardboard or paper with small holes in it, and you will see images of the sun as tiny crescents. When those crescents become thin, this is a few minutes before totality, light on the ground may take on a strange flickering effect as the same atmospheric turbulence that causes stars to twinkle begins to warp the thin shaft of light from the sun. These are called shadow bands. Some eclipse fanatics hang white sheets or set up near blank white walls to see this subtle and really weird effect. Just before totality begins, tiny bits of the photosphere will peek through the valleys and troughs of the moon, giving a brief appearance of pinpricks of light known as Bailey's beads. Then, day turns to night, the stars come out, there's twilight all around, and people go nuts. The sun takes on a completely alien appearance. The first thing you'll see is the corona, which is the glowing inner part of the solar wind. It's a mass of plasma, electrons, and heavier atoms and molecules that are drawn away from the sun by magnetic fields and given a push by the brilliant light of the sun. The corona is about as bright as the full moon, and it looks really weird. Looking like a line of red laser pointer dots, the photosphere is made up of tongues of hydrogen plasma called prominences. All around the sun will be a strange and unfamiliar sight in the middle of the day. The bright planets Venus and Mercury will be easily visible. You'll see stars during the day. The event will be so overwhelming that the perhaps two minutes of totality will seem to go by in an instant. Okay, um, one word about safety. People like me are always going out of the way to tell people don't stare at the sun during an eclipse. This somehow implies that there is something special, maybe weird eclipse rays that make staring at the sun a bad idea at that time in particular. The truth is this, it is never a good idea to stare at the sun. It's just a lot more tempting to do it during an eclipse. Seeing the photosphere in the partial phases of the eclipse requires eclipse glasses or a telescope specifically suited for solar observing. Many outlets will be selling eclipse glasses for the big date and be sure to get a pair or two so you don't have to share. Except during that brief moment of totality, and only then, absolutely do stare, gawk, gape, and thrill. Just don't miss it. Keep in mind that 100 million of your closest fellow Eclipse Chaser friends will be traveling towards the path of totality as well. It's uh, wise to plan ahead, know where you're going, be flexible, take weather into account. In general, the weather is likely to be clearer the further west you go. But whatever you do, get yourself into the path of totality. You will not regret it. It is an amazing experience.